Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and today we've got the sound system demo of the 2020 Mercedes AMG G63 and its 15 speaker 590 watt Burmester audio system. This is going to be an in-depth review, we're going to take a look at how the infotainment system works, we're going to look at audio input, speaker locations, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay usage, list some sample tracks, get out on the road and listen to those tracks while we're rolling, and I'll give you my thoughts at the end. So before we get started, let's hop out to a quick look at the car. So this almost needs no introduction. This is the wild and crazy AMG G63. The G-Class in general, also known as the G-Wagon, almost like the luxury Jeep, if you will. Incredibly capable off-road vehicle, but turned into luxury status symbol. Fun fact, this is the only Mercedes model that they actually sell more AMG versions than they do of the standard car. So if you want to see more on the G63, we've got a full review. Check the link in the description for that. Now we always do these tests with uncompressed lossless WAV audio files on a USB stick plugged directly into the system and high quality binaural microphones in both of my ears, giving you the most realistic audio system demo available on YouTube. We also do the test with the sound settings set to the factory defaults. So let's take a look at those now. Now there is no touch screen here in the G63. You've got to use either this track pad or the rotary knob or this little touch pad on the steering wheel which will mirror the system. But as you can see already from me fumbling around, it's not the most intuitive system and there's so many touch pads in the vehicle that it's very easy to accidentally press things. For example, if you're just resting your arm up here and your hand comes down, it's very easy to accidentally slide into a new song or something like that. It has happened to me before. But let's check out sound settings. I typically find myself using this rotary knob on the sound. You've got bass, mid-range, and treble in the equalizer, as well as standard front, rear, left, right, fader, and balance. You also have an automatic volume adjustment, so as you get going on the road and the wind noise picks up from this giant moving box, it'll adjust the volume. And you have a surround setting, so we're gonna turn that on for the start of this test. We'll go through and sample the equalizer now. Audio inputs here in the G63 of your standard AM, FM, Sirius, XM, satellite radio. So I have two USB-A ports, no USB-Cs, Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto Support, and an SD card slot. So what does that mean you're missing? Well, you don't have a disc player. Make sure, yep, none hiding in there. And you also don't have a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input jack. Not a big surprise here in 2020, but they would be nice to see. However, if you do carry on a lot of high fidelity audio, you've got those two USB data ports as well as an SD card slot. For volume adjustments, you have a nice rotary knob here on the steering wheel. I find it one of the easiest to use in the industry. You also have a neat rotary knob right here. Not quite as intuitive, but once you get used to where it is, it is pretty easy to use. For track selection, there are quite a few different ways to do it. Like I said earlier, you've got your trackpad right here on the steering wheel that mirrors the system and also swipe around or use the rotary knob depending on what screen you're on but say you're in navigation and you just want to change the track real quick you can press this button either that kind of brings up this little screen here and then you can slide around or rotate around to kind of go through your track list like that speaker locations here in the g63 as i said there are 15 speakers some websites say 16 but no Mercedes documentation that I can find anywhere actually shows you where all the speakers are, so I had to do some digging and find them myself. So let's go take a look at them now. Opening the door, you've got one way down here, one, two, three up there, four, five, six on the other side, seven, eight right up here above you, two tweeters. Back, you've got actually nine, 10, there are two speakers hiding in here. That gives you 11, 12 on the other side. And getting into the trunk, we have 13, 
14, and then a big old subwoofer right here making 15. You can hear as the space comes on, it really thumps. It's pretty quiet right now, but pretty powerful subwoofer. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Let's start with CarPlay first because thanks to the Mercedes having two data ports in here, I can actually already have it plugged in while my USB is going, so that's nice. Come out here. Go up real easy to Apple CarPlay. You can see it takes up the whole screen. Looks very nice. As I said earlier, it's not a touch screen, so you have to either use this little trackpad or the rotary knob to navigate around Apple CarPlay. Not the worst in the world, but definitely not as intuitive as a touch screen. So you go over here to music. There's that. You got your settings menu. Everything looks good. It's not the highest resolution in the world, but it works. Pop that out. Plug in Android Auto. I have already launched Android Auto on this car. As you see, it comes right up automatically. Now, this is a bit frustrating. Android Auto does have a widescreen mode, but the G-Class does not seem to be taking advantage of that. So instead, it just kind of gives you a black area right there, and then the rest of it, you navigate around using the rotary knob. Another frustration I found is it doesn't seem that the trackpad actually works for in Android Auto Navigation. It does work for moving around the map, which is an interesting call. So I can, doesn't I can't pinch to zoom, but I can move around in the map, but to actually go to different Android Auto controls, like say I wanna get down to Google Play Music there, I have to use the rotary knob. If I try to choose the trackpad, nothing happens. And you can see there's your main menu, go to settings, it's all there. Now, if you want to go back to your home area, like I sh showed there, you can press home, you get right back to your Mercedes instrumentation. You can change settings, change your lighting, music, anything like that, and then just go right up back to your device. Not too bad. All right, let's get on the road. And of course, what G63 sound test would be complete without getting a little sample of those side exiting exhausts. <laughs> that is mean. So we pull out onto the road here, I'll give it the beans. sounds like. <laughs> anyway, back to the music. song can really test the limits of an audio system with a bunch of different instruments, music channels, and it's really loud and powerful. So let's see how the G63 handles it.
Master Systems always do such an amazing job at audio clarity. They allow all the instruments to come through on their own, very crisp and clean and clear. It manages to get the mid ranges and, and feel powerful and strong and musical, while at the same time getting through the high ends and the low ends and nothing sounds harsh or hollow. Now this vehicle, it's not quite as good as the GLS systems, a little bit more fine-tuned in that car, but these speakers still do really well. Let's toggle off the surround setting. Whoops, as you can see right there, I changed this track accidentally. So given that, let's just turn the music down. You can hear what the G63 sounds like at 70 miles per hour. Moving a giant box down the highway at 70 miles per hour does incur a good amount of wind noise. Definitely hearing that, and you always hear the exhaust rumbling along right outside of you. But when I'm driving around a four liter twin turbocharged AMG V8, I am not complaining. For this next song, we'll turn the bass all the way up and see how the G63 does. darn good. As I was saying earlier, Burmester systems are some of my favorite. They do such an excellent job at representing all of the different musicality components of any type of music. You get all your instruments, they've got 10 channels in the system, plenty of power, plenty of places for sounds to come through. This is not the highest example of one of those systems, but it's still pretty darn strong for any sort of listening you'd want to do. And if you're a true audiophile, and that's the most important thing for you in a vehicle, maybe look to some of Mercedes' other more luxuriously appointed vehicles. This one, this is a little bit of a status symbol first. So if I were giving an objective rating, I'd give this about a nine, maybe drop it to an eight and a half just for how difficult this system can be to use. I know once you get used to it, it can be a little easier, but still there's no getting around the fact that this touch thing makes for some accidental motions, even once you get used to it. Subjectively speaking, for a car that costs almost $200,000, I'm probably dropping this down to seven and a half or an eight. I just think they could have done a little bit better with audio power and ease of use for the system. So thank you all so much for watching. Hope you found this interesting and entertaining. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and we'll see you on the next one. And as always, drive on.